Well, good morning everyone and welcome to the Red Cross War Memorial Children's Hospital. I'd like to introduce you to this amazing institution. The hospital was built in the mid-1950s as a war memorial. It was built in memory of all those who gave their lives during the First and Second World Wars. And the intention was that it would be a living memorial serving children of Cape Town and its environments. But it's also set in many ways at the heart of the city of Cape Town. But the transport routes to this hospital come from all the areas around Cape Town. The majority of children who come to this hospital come from the poorer communities. And it's a source of great pride to me that this hospital has cared for those children and has a real ethos that it will never turn away children in need. It's a remarkable institution that is fully funded by the government, but it has also received huge donations from the public across South Africa through the auspices of the Children's Hospital Trust. Every year, Hundreds of thousands of children come here for general paediatric services, but also specialized and highly specialized services, both surgical and paediatric. This hospital is staffed by a whole community of professionals who are all funded by the hospital itself and who work here full time to provide their services to children. Part of Offering a comprehensive health care means understanding that knowledge and understanding of disease and treatment of disease is not static. And key to that is this idea of research. So it's a partnership between the Western Cape government as well as the University of Cape Town in generating new understanding, new ways of doing things that are responsive to the need. And that is one of the key roles of a tertiary academic hospital, but is to be able to find new ways of doing things better, of doing things more efficiently, of growing our knowledge base about our diseases and the priorities we need to have as a society and as community with Red Cross Hospital in particular that will have to refer to the needs of children and their families with respect to how we respond to those needs. Within the Red Cross Children's Hospital, there is this axis of what one will call critical uh, care services. That will include areas such as emergency services where children requiring acute medical care come through. But once they've been seen and stabilized, they will need to then come to an area where they can be looked after with those acute, quite often life-threatening conditions in the form of the intensive care unit, for example. But apart from just looking after those children with acute life-threatening emergencies, the critical care axis will also include supporting children after they've undergone major interventions. So for example, a child that has had a liver transplant, for example, or a child that has undergone massive heart surgery will need to be given that critical care support post that surgery until they're stable enough to be discharged. So that is basically what Red Cross does, and it offers that service not just for the city of Cape Town, but for the province. We get children being referred through from the, the whole province, but also, like as I mentioned earlier on, children that may have come from other provinces and the rest of the continent that may need tertiary care, they rely on the intervention of that critical care expertise in order to navigate that acute, vulnerable state in their lives. So this is a brand new emergency unit um, that we have just taken occupation of and we are a tertiary and sometimes quaternary hospital whereby children with complex systems conditions are referred in from day hospitals, from secondary hospitals and from other provinces and even from other countries to the specialized care that is offered here at Red Cross Hospital. We see um, children who are referred in for stabilization and uh, for almost every specialty, they would come through our unit for further stabilization in the resuscitation unit here. We will stabilize and liaise directly with the subspecialists and get almost immediate opinions from them. We work with the neurologists as well and they work very closely with the neurosurgeons and they are currently doing state-of-the-art 
groundbreaking research and some treatments which involve uh, curing epilepsy with surgery. We've got children who have ENT problems that we can call the ENT surgeons immediately and they will come and scope our children and assist with airway stabilization. Children who need ventilation can be started on their ventilation here. We have uh, ventilators available. We've got state-of-the-art equipment, the video laryngoscope and the ultrasound scans uh, enable safer intubation for our children. We've got children who have complex cardiac conditions um, who need cardiologists urgently. Sometimes they need to have immediate surgery and we can uh, sort that out. We stabilize them in this unit. We've also got these um, res uh, smaller resuscitators here for our very young infants. Uh, they form about 20% of our l workload and really they come from places like the uh, dedicated neonatal services where they may have uh, abdominal catastrophes that require pediatric surgery or they have congenital cardiac conditions uh, and they come here for correction. We've got children who have organ transplants, so we've got liver transplant children who frequently come into us um, and with, with their complications, most commonly it's cholangitis. So we stabilize them here, we liaise with the gastrointestinal specialists and they come in and sort things out. So having said that we are a stabilization unit, we liaise directly with the intensive care unit, with the theater and of course the subspecialists. We stand side by side and united with the trauma unit. There's just a door connecting us and we are able to help each other out. There's a specialized Lodox uh, machine in the room next door and whole body x-rays can be done which we sometimes utilize, especially if we want to know if the ventriculoperitoneal shunts have fractured or not. This is a very popular unit because it's extremely busy. We're seeing up to 35,000 children coming through our front doors uh, with over 250 uh, emergencies per month. So Red Cross Children's Hospital is a dedicated burns unit. Uh, it's run by the surgeons. Um, and in the emergency center, we've had to provide for the problem, which is quite huge, especially during winter months, where children burn frequently from hot liquids, from fire burns and steam inhalation. The biggest killer of children with burns is the rapid onset of infection. And so one of the most important things that we have come to learn is that a burn wound should be washed as soon as possible uh, on arrival here at the hospital. And so we've got a specialized and dedicated burns washroom whereby all burns are washed thoroughly and then dressed uh, in a temperature controlled room and then the patients are transferred to the specialized burns unit. We are here in the burns unit at the Red Cross Children's Hospital. Um, the burns theatre that I'm currently in forms part of the burns unit which is an, one of the critical care units at Red Cross Children's Hospital. Burns does form a huge component of the work that we do here and Apart from the minor burns, the major burns that are treated here, um, many of them need very extensive components of critical care. Another aspect of the surgical services that cover critical care in uh, Red Cross Children's Hospital would be the trauma unit and it forms a integral part of receiving new patients. So that would be the start of a then seamless journey into the intensive care unit from where many children may need surgery or radiological investigations to delineate the extent of their injuries. And we are very fortunate that this again is a seamless service that, which involves cardiothoracic surgery, ear, nose and throat surgery and the intensive care unit. And since I've mentioned cardiothoracic surgery, Red Cross Children's Hospital obviously has a very long history starting way back with the development of the heart program under Professor Christian Barnard. And a lot of the children with congenital heart lesions were treated uh, in those years here at Red Cross Children's Hospital and that service has developed and grown um, and is now considered a high volume center with all the aspects of uh, cardiac care, cardiology, 
cardiac surgery and post-operative care in an appropriately staffed, equipped intensive care unit. I think another interesting aspect of the work done here is transplantation. So Red Cross Children's Hospital is part of the University of Cape Town and Khrushchev Hospital's transplant program. And we do both living related transplants for kidney graft recipients, as well as uh, patients who need liver transplantation. These patients, of course, need post-operative care in an intensive care unit. And we are very fortunate to have both the expertise, skills and the infrastructure to deal with the post-operative needs in uh, our intensive care unit. The pediatric surgical component, uh, of course, cannot be neglected. We service both neonatal surgery as well as congenital abnormalities. And these children who may be born at the University Hospital at Khrudeskir in the neonatal intensive care unit would be transferred here for us to perform the surgery and to look after them in the intensive care setting post-operatively. This is, uh, in most cases, a seamless transition from the neonatal intensive care unit to the pediatric intensive care unit where we have the facilities to deal with newborns and both pre and post operatively we are able to accommodate them in the ICU here at Red Cross Children's Hospital. Uh, as a final component that I would like to mention is the work done by the Department of Neurosurgery here at Red Cross Children's Hospital. Under the leadership of Professor Tony Figaggi, they've done extensive work, groundbreaking work in many instances on severe traumatic brain injury and also tuberculosis of the meninges. And their work relies heavily on uh, being able to admit patients to the intensive care unit in the pre- and post-operative setting. And in that sense, they receive great support as do all the surgical services from the intensive care unit and the critical care facilities at Red Cross Children's Hospital. Almost 20% of all sick children are too sick to be cared for at clinic level or at home and are going to require hospitalization. Being cared for by an appropriately trained, skilled and knowledgeable nurse with experience to implement evidence-based nursing care is key for improving health outcomes of children. This makes specialist children's nurses a core resource for all African communities and increasingly essential for Africa's health systems. Over the past 11 years, we've made some significant progress towards developing and supporting specialist PICU nursing um, in the work and the workforce of nursing across the continent. So in a strengthened children's nursing workforce, our postgrad courses provide high quality Afrocentric education and training for children's nursing workforce in Africa. UCT and Gertrude's Children's Institute in Kenya are two training hubs of PICU nurses on the continent. We also offer a clinical master's program and of those, the last five years, 20 graduates, 10 of those graduates currently lead nursing teams in PICUs and NICUs in five different African countries. Working with um, other countries in Africa, that work is all encompassed under the African Pediatric Fellowships Program and we work in the in with nurses in other countries training and supporting also across all different four areas of our work in the master's program 10 nurses from other countries are now leading critical care units two units in ghana two units in kenya one NICU and one picu um, zambia namibia the current PICU was established 22 years ago as a multidisciplinary paediatric intensive care unit, really looking after all critically ill children at, at our hospital. And it's really a resource for all critically ill children in the Western Cape. And we also accept referrals from other parts of South Africa. Every year we have approximately 1,400 admissions to our ICU. Those children, if we think about them, about 60% of those children offer acute life-threatening conditions, surgical and medical conditions, but we also provide a huge amount of support for children having elective surgery, elective cardiac surgery, neurosurgery, 
small preterm babies get transferred from the neonatal units if they require abdominal surgery or other types of surgery. At this time of year in winter, we provide a huge amount of support for our surgical teams. There's a large number of children after trauma that get admitted to our unit and require life, um, life support. We are a team of five consultants. We're supported by lots of uh, paramedical services, dietitians, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, uh, aromatherapists, really to provide holistic care to critically ill children in our ICU. We see a lot of children who come through our ICU, but also to our casualty with kidney problems. Many of them have what we've called acute kidney injury, so they present with diarrhea or vomiting, dehydration, and then end up with kidney problems. We also look after children who need transplants, so kidney transplants, liver transplants, and we also follow up the odd child with a heart transplant. So we are used to seeing children with critically ill conditions, specifically kidney conditions, but also related to many of the other illnesses that I've mentioned. We're also really proud of the fact that we do a lot of training. Um, of junior doctors from uh, our local University of Cape Town, but also junior and senior doctors from across South Africa, but also across Africa as a whole. Uh, we have recently introduced the bone marrow transplant unit to the Red Cross Children's Hospital. Previously, these bone marrow transplants were being done, done at Hrodeskia. But due to COVID, it has caused us to sort of expedite uh, bone marrow transplantations being done here at Red Cross Children's Hospital. We plan to, doing, to do about 20 bone marrow transplants a year. Our main referral base of patients would be from Tigerberg Hospital, uh, as well as from other satellite areas around uh, the Western Cape, and as well as KwaZulu-Natal. A bone marrow transplant unit requires a vast array of multidisciplinary team um, and this would require the assistance of many of our colleagues working across many areas of the hospital including the intensive care, our surgeons, surgeon colleagues and other team members. Um, another aspect to the transplantation is the infusion of cells. This may be infusion of stem cells from either a member of their family, often being a sibling, or a parent, or being an allergenic stem cell transplant, which would be stem cells that would be donated to us through a registry, either locally or internationally. Unique to Red Cross Children's Hospital and in the context of Africa is an ICU on site, uh, which essentially means that patients that would require the care of ICU would be able to get this on site and not require to be traveled um, very far distances away to a site where there would be an ICU available. So we really look forward to welcoming you to WIFBIX. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the airwaves, in the lectures, at the workshops, and we're very excited that we're having this Congress that focuses on children with critical illness. So welcome and we are excited about this. Thank you.